guys! Sejam todos muito bem-vindos a mais um vídeo aqui no meu canal. Logo de cara eu tenho um recado pra você. Te prepara, porque esse vídeo de hoje ele tá mais parrudo than ever, do que nunca. Primeiro porque o foco dele é te ajudar a desenvolver a sua conversação. Sim, algo que vocês estão sempre me pedindo. Segundo porque você vai aprender mais de 25 frases avançadas para conversas em inglês. E terceiro, já que a gente vai trabalhar num nível mais hardcore, deixa eu fazer isso aqui. That's right, this video is gonna be 100% in English. But if you need the subtitles, don't worry. Just hit the button that I'm showing you on the screen right now and then pick Portuguese. Yeah, Erica Belmonte never leaves anyone behind. <laughs> Well, my dear, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because every week we have new videos around here. So make sure to subscribe on the link in the description of the video if you want to be notified and also receive the materials for each class for free. Okay? So, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna divide our sentences into seven groups and they are expressing opinion, rephrasing, changing the topic, agreeing, disagreeing, asking for opinion, and the last one, time buyers. I love that one. <laughs> so let's start with expressing opinion. Well, the most common ones are I think or I believe. Like, I think you're pretty or I believe you're wrong. And if you want to avoid saying I think or I believe all the time, you can also say as I see it. Like, as I see it, coffee is a must to start the day. It's like in my opinion. Or as I see it, a quick nap can work wonders. Especially for Benjamin. <laughs> Another way you can say it is the way I see it. Like the way I see it, routines keep us grounded. Or the way I see it, unplugging at night improves sleep. What else? Oh, you can also say I'm a big believer in. And be careful with the preposition, okay? I'm a big believer in. Like I'm a big believer in morning stretches or in taking short breaks during work. He has then as I see it been completely and totally refashioned as a person. The way I see it, you have three choices. The way I see it, I owe you, sir. I'm a big believer in second chances. Great, now let's move on. Do you know when you're talking to someone and you're so excited that you say the words without any connection or just logical sense just because you simply want to say everything very fast? Yeah, you're stumbling all over. And by the way, in case you don't know, to stumble all over something or all over the words is when you think faster than you can say. You have some difficulty saying clearly or correctly. Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you 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 could you do yeah like that when this happens take a deep breath and start again by rephrasing what you meant here are just a few options for you to say the first one i suggest you say is what i mean is like what i mean is jogging daily keeps the mind fresh Or you can start saying something and then you rephrase it, like skipping breakfast is an ideal. What I mean is it energizes the start of the day. What else? You can also say to put it in another way, to put it in another way. Like I feel great when I start the day early. See, you were just rephrasing it. You were just saying the same thing, but using other words. You can also say, oh, I just want to make myself clear here. To make yourself clear, you just want to guarantee that the other person really understands you. So again, you are rephrasing it. For example, I just want to make myself clear here. Daily journaling has changed my perspective. That's a real life example. Imagine I was just sharing with you about journaling, but maybe you don't get the idea. I mean, see, I mean, the importance of that. So I give you more words, more explanations. Let me give you another one. Setting small goals helps. And I just want to make myself clear here. It breaks tasks into manageable parts. It's easier if you do this way. What else? You can also say, let me clarify. Like, I avoid having meals at night. And let me clarify, it helps with better digestion. Or you can say, I always feel bad when I eat late at night. I want to make myself very clear. Then let me clarify. What I mean is... You have no domestic roots, all right? Just to make it clear, 
You're not getting married then? Okay, now what if you want to change the subject, maybe because it's boring, <laughs> or because you have something more important to say, you are in a rush, I don't know. And in this case, you don't want to sound rude, right? So first of all, one golden tip that will help you say whatever you want and still be polite. Use the magic words, I'm sorry, or excuse me. Like, I'm sorry, but I have to go. Or I'm sorry, but can I ask you something? If you want to use excuse me, you can say, excuse me, may I ask you something randomly? Or excuse me, could I change the topic real quick? I have something that I must say. So these are just polite words you can use before or even after your sentence, but there are other ways that you can use to say what you want. I mean, for this case, let me clarify for this case. <laughs> for example, by the way, by the way, by the way, like, by the way, have you heard about the new cafe that opened downtown? So the person was talking about, I don't know, meeting one day at a cafe or something like that. And you just remembered about this new cafe and you want to mention that. Like you didn't change the subject, but you wanted to bring something else. You wanted to add another information. You can also say, oh, speaking of which, like since we're talking about it, like, oh, speaking of which, have you seen the latest film adaptation of that novel? You can also say, and this one is so common in English, that reminds me of blah, blah, blah. So let's just imagine you're talking to me about, I don't know, Elton John. So I can connect by saying, oh, that reminds me, did I tell you about the concert I went last weekend? So we're talking about concerts here, right? See, not that hard. <laughs> That reminds me, we got new brochures and I want you to see the new brochures. Speaking of which, have, have you seen her? Speaking of which, do you have a plan for the next front page? Oh, by the way, this is a friend of mine, Tree. Okay, now in English, there are several ways to express agreement. While yes and I agree are direct and very, very common and correct, of course, let's say that there are more nuanced phrases that can make a conversation feel more natural and more friendly. So you can simply say, exactly. Like you can say, oh my God, Erica, this video is so useful. And I can say, exactly. <laughs> I agree with you because you're going to be learning so much today. I know. <laughs> Another one you can say is, tell me about it. And be careful because when you say, tell me about it, you're just agreeing with the person. You're not asking the person to tell you anything like a story or no, that's an expression. So tell me about it is, I agree. Like, hell yeah. Like making a healthy breakfast every day requires planning. And then you can say, oh, tell me about it. It's why I usually prepare the night before. Like, I agree. See? Another one is, I couldn't agree more. Okay, you start with, I couldn't. I know it sounds negative, but it's actually very, very positive. You're saying, I couldn't agree more. Like, I really agree with you. I, I agree more than you imagine. Like, there's something that I believe, which is listening to music while working really boosts productivity. I mean, calm music, not like Lady Gaga, because otherwise I'll be singing and dancing and I'm not working. <laughs> And then you can say, I couldn't agree more. It sets the right mood. Another one, I think we're on the same page here. See, same thing, I agree, I think we're on the same page. You can also use this one kind of to understand if the person also agrees with you by saying, are we on the same page? Like, do you agree with me? Do you follow the same idea? Like, for example, it's essential to plan out the week every Sunday night. That's something that I do, for example. And if you agree, you can say, I think we're on the same page here. It sets the tone for the entire week. One more, you took the words right out of my mouth. A little slower, you took the words right out of my mouth. So I was just saying something and you agree so much that you say, oh my God, that's exactly what I was thinking or what I was about to say. We have like an expression like this in Portuguese, right? So you took the words right out of, linking sound, right out of my mouth. Okay. For example, morning routines like meditating or stretching can make a world of difference. And if you agree, you can say, you took the words right out of my mouth. It's such a great way to start the day. But I think we're basically on the same page. I couldn't agree more. You took the words right out of my mouth. Women. Tell me about it.
Okay, now let's change scenarios. What about disagreeing? In any conversation, it's more than natural for disagreements to arise. Yeah, I know, I disagree and no is very clear, it's correct, it's simple and it works. But once again, there are softer and more nuanced phrases that can express dissent without appearing confrontational. So let's see some of them. And the first one is, mm, I think we don't see eye to eye. Eye to eye, eye to eye. We don't see eye to eye. Like, I don't agree. So again, we're in the middle of a conversation and then I say, skipping breakfast is an easy way to lose weight. And if you don't agree, you can say, mm, I don't think we see eye to eye. Breakfast fuels my day. You could simply have said, I disagree, but that's another way of saying the same thing, but in a more advanced way. Next one, I beg to differ. And you can compliment by saying, I beg to differ, I'm afraid, blah, blah, blah. Like, I beg to differ is just like, I disagree. This I'm afraid is just like you don't want to hurt that person's feeling or anything. You don't want to be confrontational. So if we're talking about, I don't know, multiple short breaks during work and I say it can be distracting and you don't think it's true, you don't agree, you can say, I beg to differ, I'm afraid those breaks help me refocus. So see, some people like some short breaks, others say, no, it's not good at all. Another way we have is, that's not exactly how I see it. Like, it's best to check emails first thing in the morning. Do you agree with me? If you don't agree, you can say, eh, that's not exactly how I see it. I prefer starting my day with more focused tasks or far away from cell phones. I don't know. I beg to differ. Let's break their rules. If we don't see eye to eye. That's not how I see it. No, I beg to differ. Okay, so you agreed and disagreed. But what about when it's your time to ask your friend's opinion? Engaging in meaningful conversations often involves seeking out others' perspectives. So instead of directly asking, what's your opinion? There are so many expressions in English that can make these questions sound more conversational and inviting. And the first one is, what's your take on this? For example, and this is a very, let's say, modern topic. Many people are switching to a four-day work week. What's your take on this? Or you can also ask, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on this? Like, remote work seems to be the new norm. What are your thoughts on this? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? What's your take on this maniac? And what are your thoughts, uncle? What are your thoughts on opening the coronation up to the public? What's your take on what went down in that market? And our last one, time buyers. When engaged in a conversation, sometimes we need a moment to think before responding, especially to unexpected or complex questions, right? <laughs> Time buyers are phrases that give us a brief pause to formulate our thoughts without leaving an awkward silence. You know that awkward silence? <laughs> These expressions maintain the flow of conversation while providing a buffer. So here are some common time buyers. And one tip, when you use time buyers, you usually speak slower because what you want is time, right? So for example, that is weird. I was just thinking about it the other day. Like, oh my God, that's just so weird. I was just talking about this the other day with a colleague who had a similar experience. Another thing you can say is, hmm, that's a tough one. If it was a question, of course. Like, hmm, that's a tough one. There are so many options to choose from. Another one is, that's an interesting question. So now you're thinking like, oh my God, what should I answer? <laughs> And you can always compliment by saying, that's an interesting question. I've never considered it from that angle before. Another very common one is, give me a moment to think. Give me a moment to think. Give me, or give me, right? Give me is give me. Give me a moment to think. Like, oh my God, I don't know. Give me a moment to think. Oh yeah, it was in 2015. That's right. Another one, off the top of my head. This is like when you don't know the exact information, number, or whatever. And you say, mm, off the top of my head, like from what I can remember, I would say there were about 20 people in the meeting. But I don't know. If you need the exact number, I can check my notes. One more, you can say, that's a good question. Like, that's a good question. I don't know if Erica's live class is at 7 or 8 p.m. every Thursday here on YouTube. It's at 8 p.m., okay? That's a tough one. I just 
I need a moment to think. Just a great idea off the top of my head. That's an interesting question, considering you've been trying to get rid of me ever since I hit town. Yay! So that's it for today, guys. We have seen and learned more than 25 advanced conversational phrases to help you in seven different scenarios. How about 25 sentences more? Huh? What do you say? Come on, just comment here, hashtag 25 more, right here in the comments if that's what you want. And ooh, just one second. Eu espero que vocês tenham gostado muito do vídeo de hoje, aprendido muito também. Não esquece de se inscrever aqui no meu canal, de aproveitar para deixar o like e também mandar esse vídeo para alguém que você sabe que precisa aprender inglês, que você gosta ou que você não gosta também, mas manda o vídeo. O meu muito obrigada por você ter chegado até o final e até a próxima. Bye!